Hello guys, welcome back to Big Brother UK and this is a whole brand new season of exciting twists, turns and new housemates most importantly. Now if you guys are watching from America and you have no idea how Big Brother UK works, it is entirely public voted. This show is more about personality than Love Island is. This is all about how these people appear on your TV for the next six weeks. People vote each other in secret, put them up for eviction, and then the public decides who gets shown the front door. The American version, we know it's all gameplay based. This version, gameplay, is looked down on. Without much further ado, let us get straight into our premiere episode. We've got 16 new housemates to talk about. I've made little notes on all of them. We've got a big twist to talk about right at the end of the episode and plenty of content coming your way. Before we get into the actual episode, I just want to say that this series, I know last year I did an episode a day, not doing that this year. We're going to be doing an episode every couple of days. On a normal week, It'll be Sunday and Monday's episodes coming out on a Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday's out on a Thursday. Thursday and Friday out on a Saturday. That's the vibe we're going for. That is the dealio. There might be some schedule changes based on when I'm free, when I'm not free, when I'm around, when I'm not around. But for the most part, that is going to be the schedule. And you guys are going to have plenty of juicy Big Brother content to talk about. So, without much further ado, let's actually get into meeting our housemates, shall we? So, the first housemate we've got is Rosie. She is 29 years old, and I think she seems quite entertaining, quite funny, incredibly awkward, and it's it's the kind of awkward funny that you get when you're not really sure what you're doing here, and you're like, oh, yeah, gonna crack some jokes, because otherwise this is gonna be really, really awkward. She walked straight into the house, and she was like, right, everyone, calm down, aka me. I need to calm down, and it just had me absolutely howling really got off to the right foot with her to the right foot on with the right you get what i mean so i feel like rosie is going to be an interesting one i think she's going to probably click with some of the younger kids but who knows at this point in time we've literally just seen them all enter the house anything is possible anything could happen but next up we do have emma emma is 52 52 i know and we are finally getting some older representation on this show. She is a mother. She looks a little bit like a cheeky naughty cougar. I don't know whether she's married or not. It's just giving mother of the series. We had Kerry last year as the mother. This year could be Emma. And I'm kind of excited. I think she's got great vibes. She's very, very funny. She accidentally ripped her dress in the opening, like, uh, intro video that she did. She was like, that's what you get for paying $3.49 off Timu. And that had me howling. I think she's so funny. Her entrance outfit was mwah. It was brilliant. And I just think she's got great vibes about her. Like, she's got really, really classy, funny, but also a little bit grungy at the same time. Like, an imag I can imagine that she's, like, getting down at the weekend, slamming your Zambuka shots. She's a crazy one, and I'm super excited to get to know her a little bit more. Next up, we have Shegun, and he's an interesting one. He is religious, and he's a mama's boy, apparently. Uh, so I was like, mm, okay. And then he was like, oh, I'm very musical. I can sing, I can play the piano, I can do this, I can do that. I was like, ooh, okay actually you're a little bit more interesting to me now i am worried that i will see this throughout the rest of the sort of thing that a lot of the boys are very similar in temperament i don't think there's a great deal of difference between them we had a really good variety of men last year but this year it seems like they're all very one note maybe that's just from their intro videos but, I don't know, Chicken seemed nice, he seemed funny, but I don't really have much else to say on him apart from, hopefully, he gets a little bit more interesting. Next up, we have Nathan, and I can already tell Nathan is not going to be a very popular person. Nathan is a par- or was apparently Prince Charles, now King Charles' butler, and- that's kind of crazy because he's only about 24, I think he said. I kind of stopped noting down their ages because they were talking too fast and I could barely remember their name when they walked in. So I am interested to see how that goes. He described himself as very right wing 
and he said he admires Nigel Farage, which I can already tell means he's going to be hated for the next nine weeks on Twitter. Nine weeks? Six weeks on Twitter. I just don't get vibes from him that he's going to be very entertaining. But then again, last year, Henry walked into the house and was like, yep, I'm a Tory. And he turned out to be one of the like favourites of the series. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like there's there's room for people to look past political affiliations and especially in this country you can i feel like but i don't know i'm not sure how i'm vibing with him at the moment i'm not vibing at the moment is what i'd probably say but who knows how it will happen in the future next up we have days and days is a very interesting person to put on this show um I, they're very interesting i would say i think there were moments where i was like oh i understand why days has been cast because they put her right after a right-wing activist. Not right-wing activist, right-wing supporter. And um, Daisy is a climate change um, to protester person, climate activist, I wrote it down here. Apparently she lives on a boat, which is kind of iconic and kind of cool and kind of kooky, kind of crazy. Like I said, once we got to like the fifth person, I was like, oh, okay, this series actually has a lot of potential for different kinds of housemates. And then in the second half, it kind of went a little bit downhill. Like I said, the guys were all very, very similar. And I'm not really seeing why they've been cast. The women, I can 100% understand why they've been cast. Some of these men, I don't know, a little bit dodgy, a little bit kooky, a little bit crazy. But I do like Days. I think there's a lot of potential for them to be a very impactful member of the house. And I would find it absolutely hilarious if she was evicted and she absolutely stuck herself to the big brother house and went, no, I'm not leaving. Because <laughs> we all know that's exactly what Just Stop Oil does. So yeah, it would be interesting. It would be funny. Next up, we have Khaled. And remember when I said there's a right wing guy who supports Nigel Farage? Well, this guy's a refugee. <laughs> And I don't, not laughing at him being a refugee, because I don't think that, that that's anything to laugh about. I'm laughing at the fact that they've literally, in the space of three contestants, got someone who's right wing, someone who's a climate activist, someone who's a refugee. I just think, like, they're actually just playing mind games here. And it's brilliant. They're, they're already playing mind games. They don't even know it yet. And that's brilliant. It's excellent. Khaled did say that he was single and ready to mingle in so many words. He's a bit of a lover boy, which is kind of sweet. He does look very lovely. And I'm sure he's going to be a hit with the ladies in the house. But I don't know. I do find showmances a little bit boring, i got to say. I think it's purely because they tend to take up a lot of airtime when they don't need to. I think what was so interesting about January last year was the fact that it was a slow burn until literally like the last two weeks. And even before that, it was a love triangle, kind of, not really. But it was just interesting to watch, I think. Whereas, I don't know, if, it, if it's a little bit too plain sailing, then I don't know, maybe boot one of them out halfway through and see how they cope, do you know what I mean? But anyway, Khaled seems nice. I'm excited to see what happens with him. Guess we'll just have to see. So next up, we have Martha. Now, apparently Martha is a lesbian. That is what I've seen on Twitter. But I could be 100% wrong with that. I do not know. Uh, she loves Google. She Googles everything, which this is one of the things that like I said I'd struggle with when I was filling out the application. I said, like, I really would struggle without Google because the amount of times a day that I'm like, oh, what's that? Let me Google it. Let me find it out. I have a thirst for knowledge. I love it. And in the house, I'd be sat there like, I actually don't know. Like, it's my go-to when I'm having a discussion with someone and we have a question and none of, neither of us know. It's like, oh, let's ask Google. Let's find out. Honestly, what did they do back in the olden days? Did they have to go to, like, libraries? Oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. But... Her outfit, her entrance outfit was wild and crazy. I looked at it and I was like, I can't work out what's going on here. She looked fabulous, but I was so confused what material it was made of because it just didn't look, it just looked crazy. It absolutely looked crazy. And I was like, what's going on here? What's hip and happening? But anyway, that is all for Martha. Let us move on to the next person. You know, when you feel old, 
when you start watching Big Brother and there are people appearing on the show that are younger than you. Lily is 20 years old. 20. Which is wild to me. Absolutely crazy and wild. She's... I, I just put very young for this show. I don't think I would want to have gone on this at 20. I feel like I wouldn't have been emotionally mature. I don't think I'm emotionally mature enough now, <laughs> let alone at 20. I'm just not sure how she's going to function because this is the first time that she's lived away from home. I assume she didn't go to uni, so she hasn't had that living away from home experience. I feel like she's going to be very coddled and people are going to get pissed off with the coddling. So I think she's going to be a very, very interesting person. She seems nice. She just seems a little bit immature and young. And I'd say that to anyone who was 20 going on this show. I'm like, do you really think that this is the best move at this point in time? Who knows? Now, next up, we have Ali. And Ali is an interesting one. She's apparently a late to life lesbian, which I find absolutely amazing. She's also a forensic psychologist, which I feel like is a little bit of a cheat code to this show. This is a, more or less a really cool experiment for her to just go in there and see how it's going to affect people. Like, first hand because you can watch it on a tv show but it's edited the live streams are not always shown in full and the live streams are only ever on for about three or four hours a night so it's not like you get to see them 24 hours a day like you do in america so i have a feeling that this is going to be a very very cool experience for her, for her and i also think that there's going to be a lot of moments where she sat in the diary room analyzing people and i think that's going to be really really interesting we're going to have someone in the show that is going to be able to tell us exactly what people are thinking and that is a very helpful skill indeed and I did enjoy that about her. So next up we have Thomas, again another kind of bland guy. I didn't get much from him other than he doesn't have a hand and he kept deep throating his like stump which was really odd. I was like why does he keep doing this? Like am I missing something? <laughs> because <laughs> it just looks a bit sus, you know what I mean? It's just it's a little bit kooky, a little bit crazy. Uh, he's also missing a leg as well. And I think, do you know what? Good on him for, A, playing football. I think he said he was a footballer. Good on you for playing football and good on you for coming on this show. We saw Dylan last year did not have a leg, I think. I think that was what happened. Um, And now we've got Thomas, who also seems, like I said, he seems funny, but I, I'm just not getting much else from him. But then again, literally this is the opening night and I've seen him for a total of like five minutes on screen. So I really can't tell you how good or bad he's going to be in the future. Let's just hope he doesn't turn out to be a bit of an arsehole. Do you know what I mean? Speaking of arseholes, we do have Ryan. I didn't vibe with Ryan, I'll be honest. I just not my cup of tea, I can't lie. I just think if you spend your intro to Big Brother complaining about pronouns and saying like oh I don't understand why people would identify as a spoon I think you've wasted your time because all we got from that is that you're just a bit of a cock and yeah I didn't rate him I didn't and it is a shame because like you you should use this time to really get to know you but you spent the majority of it complaining about not understanding pronouns and how they work. So I don't know. I just didn't vibe with that. Like pronouns, yes, they can be a confusing thing, but that's a conversation to have once you're in the house, not in your intro video. What's going on there? Come on. Like, I don't know anything about him other than like, he just looks a bit of a cock. So I just don't, I just don't vibe with him yeah just not a bit of me next up we have hannah hannah describes herself as buchetto uh which i thought she said bruschetta at first and i was like she describes herself as a bit of bread like what what's going on here but she says buchetto and that means she's a little bit bougie a little bit ghetto and she is a drama queen apparently i feel like i'm gonna get on well with hannah i think she's gonna be funny she's gonna be exciting and she's gonna be causing some drama in the house but I am concerned that she could be put up for eviction first and the audience might not buy her. They might not act like they like her. 
I don't know. I would like to see some boring people leave the show first rather than controversial ones. I think the controversial ones always make it more entertaining. And it's always the people who vote out the controversial ones that then complain that the show's boring. And I sit there and I think, hang on a minute, you voted them out. So why are you complaining? Anyway, I just, I think Hannah's going to be an interesting one, but who knows at this point. It, it literally is the first less than an hour of her being in the house. So who knows what's going to happen? I certainly do not. I gotta say the notes that I started taking were a lot less as it went throughout. So I've only got like five words for Izaz and it is a Welsh single parent. So sweet. Again, another guy who just seems a little bit bland, but like he's Welsh. He's a single parent. I feel like he's got some nice qualities about him that's going to endear him to the public. I think he's got some great, like, potential. But I just don't know why they've cast some of these people. Like, I just don't think that as themselves, they're very engaging, interesting people. Like, I would say, like, so far, they've really, they've got a cast of very interesting females. But the males just seem a bit, like, cut and dry. I mean, you've got, like, Nathan, who's, like, a bit out there and then you've got someone else later on that's like a little bit out there but everyone else looks like they're auditioning for love island and it's like oh okay like i'm i'm hoping there's a method to their madness and it's just the fact that it's a launch night show and i think a lot of people are like oh there's just a load of 20 year olds but like i don't so much care for that as long as they're interesting 20 year olds love islands for the boring people do you know what i mean like, Big Brothers for the interesting, I, I want to watch them every single night for six weeks. Like, I was obsessed with last year. Like, every chance I got, I'd be watching it. I'd be on the live streams. Actually, that's a lie. I, I never bothered watching the live streams because it was always bird noise. But I'd watch late and live. I would really get into it and involved and, like, it would capture my attention for the entire hour. I wouldn't sit on my phone. Whereas I am concerned that maybe this series is not going to have that same magic. But who knows? Next up, we have Sarah. She is the last female that we are going to uh, see today, and she is a horny farmer. That's quite literally the only thing I got from her intro video. She kept on making a load of sex puns. She's a farmer. She speaks very posh, which I found very funny, and she's kind of iconic. She's got no bullshit about her. I kind of like it. I think she's going to be interesting. I think she's going to really hold attentions. I feel like she could stir up some trouble in the house, I think she wants to stir up trouble in the house, I'll be 100% honest. But I think she's still very interesting regardless. So I have very, very good optimistic hope for her. Let's see whether she can live up to it. Oh, now I understand why they've cast him. But Marcelo literally gave me the ick within 10 seconds of him opening his mouth. Just, oh, it's just a, a, not a great vibe. And the fact that he, he just raps... And the rap wasn't even that good. They were like, oh, take the mic and rap. And he was like, ah, oh, yeah, big brother. Woo. <laughs> no, it wasn't actually as bad as that. But I don't know. He just gives me, gives me icky vibes. But I can't dislike him because he's a youth worker. And he works with underprivileged youth. And I, I just think that's incredible. And it's very, very noble of him. But also... I just find him annoying already. We, we, oh, guys. Guys, it's not funny. It's actually not funny. It's like, I don't know why you're laughing. I don't know why you're laughing at me, but like, I'm just not going to vibe with this guy. But I feel like I am going to secretly really like him and he's going to be really funny. But currently, I'm just not vibing with him. No. Our last contestant is Dean. And he's a sassy queen. We love him. I hope that that's his pronouns because he gives me vibes of like, he might be they then, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's he, him, but we'll see. But anyway, sassy queen, don't piss him off. He don't like straight men, <laughs> which absolutely fair and valid. Who does like people who just sit around and talk about football all day? I lived with five of them and I love them to pieces, but God, whenever they've talked about football, I switched off, off, just off. And I just sit there hoping it would end sometime soon. And then sometimes I just go and leave and sit in my room because I was like, I'm not even a part of this conversation and they're not going to miss me if I leave. So anyway, he seems really funny. I'm very excited to see what he's got on offer on the show. I think he's going to be very entertaining. He's going to be the quipper of the series. He's given strong narrator vibes, which I think is great. You need a narrator on a Big Brother series. 
and thankfully I'm excited because he is bringing some camp energy into the house and we always need someone just a little bit camp in the house after all. So that is it. That's all the housemates. Let's get into the big twist of launch night, shall we? As the housemates came in, they were asked to pick a side, blue or red. Now I'm going to read out where everyone ended up landing. Rosie was blue, but then became red. And I'll explain how later on. Emma chose red. Shegum chose blue. Nathan chose red. Days chose red. Carla chose blue. Martha chose red. Lily chose red. Ali chose blue. Thomas chose red. Ryan chose blue. Hannah chose red. Izaz chose blue. Sarah chose red. Marcelo chose, chose, choo, chose, chose, chose. Marcelo chose red and Dean also chose red. And when uh, Hannah came in, she, because she picked red, red team could steal someone from the other side and they chose to steal Rosie. So it ended up with five people on the blue side, 11 people on the red side. Then they explained the twist. And this was where I was getting a little bit concerned because I was like, oh, okay. They're revealing that half of, like, that the, one of the sides is going to be non-housemates and they'll be up for eviction and they'll be living in a storage room somewhere. And I was sitting there going, oh, okay, they're going to make it the blue team. But I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the results had already been predetermined well before anyone even stepped into the house. There were banners up that then dropped to show which side were housemates and which side were non-housemates. So it actually turned out that the red house with 11 of them on there were all up for eviction instantly on the first night, which I found hilarious. That's iconic and hilarious. So I'm super excited to see how this show goes over the next couple of weeks. I think it's got great potential. Like I said, the cast is good. It's not great, but I'm having a feeling that once we see tomorrow night's episode, maybe we'll get a better understanding of who each person is, where they fit in, why they've been casted. And most importantly, I'll have some funny quotes and moments to add on to the end of each episode because I know you guys find those iconic. So without much further ado, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I might be changing the background of this. I'm not sure how I'm vibing with the purple. I kept the same colour scheme that I've had for Big Brother UK all along. But I'm thinking about maybe changing the background to more of like a black or a white. I think black probably. Because I think then like the paint would stand out a little bit more. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed. I will see you in a couple of days for more updates from the house. And I'll see you guys later. Keep on ranting. Bye now.